is shaping up nicely. Time for a change of pace, though. At least at first. The next segment is about Land Rover, and we'll be starting out with the Type 3. Land Rover, the British sports utility vehicle. But before that, they were actual utility vehicles. Solid, tough trucks, unstoppable over almost any terrain. In 400 yards, turn left. The Land Rover Type 3 marks the point where that shift begins. And we'll be looking at what that meant. Over half a million Series 3s were built, and over 70% of those are still on the road today. They were extensively exported and built under license abroad. Belgium, South Africa, even Australia and New Zealand. With a robust chassis and signature Land Rover engineering, the Type 3 also marked the first time that buyers could choose interior options like seat box protectors and cubby boxes. That trend continued, and by 1982, Land Rover were offering the county spec Type 3. Leisure drivers could choose from such luxuries as all cloth seats, soundproofing, and tinted glass. The trend was increasingly clear and the future of the Land Rover was starting to take shape. If you squinted, you could already see the shape of the first sports utility vehicle, the Range Rover. While the stock Type 3 would never be particularly fast uphill, there is almost no hill that it couldn't climb, or down, for that matter, if you put a proper winch on it. In 1978, a Series 3 was custom-built for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. It only had 1,892 miles on the clock when it was auctioned into private hands. And it was in perfect condition. It would be. After all, she trained as a mechanic in the 1940s and will likely remain the only royal able to strip and rebuild an engine. Along with the Range Rover, others would follow. Discovery, Defender, and the Freelander. Each a more sophisticated and enjoyable utility vehicle. But none of them were a replacement for the Type 3. They were a different kind of car. The Type 3 was arguably the first sports utility vehicle. An evolution of the design that would lead ultimately to this. The Bowler Nemesis, an off-road racing vehicle that turned into a production SUV, the Nemesis EXR. It sports a turbocharged 5-litre Land Rover Jaguar engine crammed into a carbon fibre chassis with integral roll cage. It even has the grille, headlights and rear lights from a Range Rover.
see what the Type 3 would be like if it ever stopped doing important things, this is it. And it's beautiful. This is an all-terrain supercar. That's the only fair description for this. But that's what you get when you build an SUV with Land Rover DNA.